All right, perfect. Here we go. Welcome, welcome. And I just wanted to say, uh, if you're watching this live, you can always have your microphone on. If you have any questions, you can always, you know, uh, just say, hey, what's going on with this, or what, what are you doing there? Um, I'd like to have this to be an interactive format. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Josh. Um, Joshua, as it is cooking with uh, plant-based with Joshua, but uh, my name's Josh, and I'm just so grateful to be here, and my, my journey has been quite, um, I'll just kind of lean forward here a little bit, because I feel like I'm kind of getting lost in there. Uh, my journey has been very interesting the last uh, couple years especially, and uh, as the course has progressed, each, each Thursday of the month, we'll, we'll just share and talk, and I'll just um, do what we do, and make some food, and talk about life, and talk story, as a... Uh, as they say, and so anyway, we're gonna start chopping some things up. I asked Lemia, what should I do? Should I chop them up first, should I not? Well, what are you making today? Yes, that's right, thank you, Lemia. What's it called? The beautiful voice that you're hearing is my beautiful wife, Lemia. <laughs> so she'll be narrating a little bit here and there, keeping me on track, <laughs> there's a little peace symbol. So we're yes, we're doing the cucumber fennel as the base. I like to use those words because it's kind of like unique together, but there's so much more to it. Um, we have some celery, some kale from the garden here. That's the only thing I did from the garden uh, today couple of varieties of kale, we have some limes, uh, white onion or sweet onion, whatever you prefer, <clears throat> doesn't matter in the end, um, and then of course the fennel, the fennel root, um, so we're going to use that. Um, maple syrup to go in at the very, very end, that's just kind of in the front there, that's why I mentioned that. Also ginger, good. Um, we also have some apple cider vinegar, turmeric, coriander, uh, this, these are all the powders, uh, cumin, nutritional yeast and black pepper, the whole black peppercorns. I like to use fresh black peppercorns uh, to keep the freshness going and also some hemp seeds uh, to add at the end. So here can we I go. Ask a question? Say, can I ask a question? Yes. yes. Can you sub like leeks for the fennel? Uh, you can, you just have to kind of uh, let that marinate a little bit longer because um, leeks are a little bit more of a heartier. Um, but yeah, you can definitely, because I know some people have an aversion to leeks. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, it's the fennel. Pardon me, the fennel. Um, so, yeah, of course, you can use uh, anything else that you like. You can put carrots in there. We've done it with carrots and broccoli. Um, so, really, I know you love broccoli as well. The person that just spoke, I happen to know who that is. Um, so, yeah, so, you can use, we've, we've chopped up broccoli in here. We've done cauliflower. Really, whatever you want to do, get creative because the apple cider vinegar and the lime really work as kind of that, um, that marinating, that kind of that quote unquote cooking. Sure, thank you. Cool. All more right. people joining. All right, all right, Mr. Kelly. Well, cool. So I'm going to start here by chopping just the ends, just the very ends of my cucumbers off. Hello and welcome for those just joining. I have a little compost here. I'm not going to get so meticulous as I normally would if I'm cooking uh, slowly. But anyway, the other thing that we also wanted to mention here was the aspect of kind of consciously cooking. Yeah, I don't know if you can see all this. Um, Consciously cooking, which is just taking your time as much as possible. So I'm going to do my best being a bit of a talker. Some people also say I'm a talker. Um, so I'm going to slow down and <clears throat> just cut my veggies. And, um, you know, of course you want to conventionally cut, you know, hide your fingers back. Those people might be doing this on their own. Just make sure you're not going to cut your fingers off. Uh, protect your fingers when you cut. You may see me forget once in a while to uh, hide my fingers when I cut. That happens. I get kind of in a hurry, like I say. So cut the ends off the cucumbers. And again, I like to use this, the uh, Persian cucumbers because they're really nice and less uh, digestion uh, issues for a lot of people. So I like to just go ahead and quarter them, make them, you know, cut them in fours, and then just chop them smaller, bigger, quarter pieces, uh, quarter inch pieces, somewhere around there. And then just add that to my bowl on the side here that everything's going to go into. Can everybody see what he's doing? See? Hello, Mr. Kelly. You good? Yep. Cool. Two of my favorite people are on screen, and the third one's in the room. So it's pretty, pretty good night for me. Cool. So just chopping these up again, just kind of doing it with love and as slow as you can. Don't chop your fingers off. So for those of you just joining, we are making the cucumber fennel salad. He's just started with um, five to six Persian cucumbers. He's chopping them up into little pieces as we speak. So if you're cooking with us, go ahead and start your chopping. Or he's, just take notes and do later. He's pretty fast with his chopping, so. I don't know about that. I've seen some, some pretty quick skills in the, in the knife department, but I'm definitely doing my best to, to improve. 
Yeah, there's many ways to, to do this. I'm actually going to take a couple little courses to uh, actually learn a few better techniques than just watching people in the kitchen as I was working and doing different jobs throughout my life and, and just uh, observing how the chefs and the cooks were doing their thing. So yeah. So yeah, my journey has been very interesting. Those of you that are on here know much of my story anyway, because we had many, many meals together, sometimes with our mouths open chewing, sometimes without our mouths open chewing, but eventually we learned to chew with our mouths closed. <laughs> uh, so, got the cucumbers up here, chopped, ready to go, boom, they're just going to set off on the side. Um, I'm going to take my kale right now, I, I took a, these are again, just a, about a handful of kale, you don't have to get too bigger, so I guess depending on how many people you're going to be feeding, you can always double up everything that we're doing. So I took a little bit of a, about a, a bunch of kale and kind of massaged it earlier, and I'm just going to kind of chop it up into some quarter slices. I like the kale to be uh, very thin, just because of texture um, in the salad. If you like, so why, and so why do you massage the kale, and what do you massage it with? Uh, just my hands this particular time, but you massage the kale to kind of break up the leaves, because when you break up the leaves the uh, antioxidants kind of get uh, awakened in the plant, if you will. It thinks it's being attacked, so it sends uh, nutrients for itself, but it's, they're actually really beneficial nutrients for us as well. So it's that beautiful coexistence with plants and, and, and uh, humans that we can grow the food, take care of it, and it gives us some, some good stuff in the back. So um, on the other side, so just kind of no real method to it. It doesn't have to be too super like, you know, choppy choppy but uh, I like to have it somewhat thin again the the acids and the lime and the uh, apple cider vinegar really take care of it. it's like that marinade of ceviche if you if you've ever done a ceviche this is kind of like the idea of doing ceviche but just with all plants right so we're going to be cooking cooking the, the ingredients but just with with acids from from plant juices all right so next is our cucumbers no uh, excuse right. me sorry <laughs> I was going to say, I, I need to, I'm here in, to my, keep in, in my head, I'm thinking, I need to show them that, that I put this on the cucumbers, and then I say cucumbers. So, kale on top of the cucumbers, just hanging out, ready to go. One more step, and then we'll add the apple cider vinegar and the lime to get that marinating. So He was not happy with his celery, but we yeah, couldn't find... Yeah, no, it was good, it was good. I couldn't find any at the, at the farmer's market today, but anyway. Um, so, so, you just kind of take these, again, little tiny... However you want to do it. Smaller is better. Sometimes, you know, the celery can get a little crunchy for people, but again, after about two or three days, uh, it just becomes this really nice marinade, kind of like a, a cold soup. And you want to, I cut the ends off of these, you know, the kind of the, the exposed earlier parts. So I'm just going to chop everything up, even the leaves. If you have leaves on your celery, that's great. Um, gives a nice, kind of a tiny little bit of flavor to it, those celery leaves. But, so that's the celery, done, ready to go. Adding that on top of everybody else. Good, good. Hello, hello, girls. Hi, friends. How are you? Our computer's over there, but I have to look over here to say hi. <laughs> hi, guys. Cool. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of the apple cider vinegar. I just uh, poured this out a little earlier, so it's about three quarters of a cup of apple cider vinegar. And... Just like to drizzle that kind of all around it. Good. Mm. Put that over here. Good. What's apple cider vinegar good for? Apple cider vinegar is great. Good question, Emily. Mean, is great for uh, is great for helping the acid, the uh, pH in the body, and it's good to have like a little bit of um, recommended to do like a little bit of lime and a little bit of apple cider vinegar in the like in the morning, kind of mid morning. Um, before you eat a, a big meal and with some water and if you can't tolerate that then maybe put a little teaspoon of like agave syrup or maple syrup in there um, so I'm just gonna lime just gonna juice a couple of these limes here with a old school juicer I like to do this because it gets some of that pulp in there as well so pulp adds a little bit of tiny bit but a little bit of fiber so that's good lime is also an antidepressant yeah good lime is good grief. yeah and you can also take the microplane after this and get the skins, is that, that um, 
you know, the zest of the skin is very, very beneficial as well, vitamin C's and all those things as well. We have, you know, we all, I think you all know that we have our own aromatherapy company, Sacred Sense Aromatherapy, and Lime is one of our top sellers for many things, but definitely uh, for depression, for helping the, the wintertime blues especially. So I'm going to do two of these limes because the first one wasn't that juicy. Also, when you're doing cancer treatments, it's right. nice to drink lime water to keep your blood pH balanced. Yeah. So good. I'm just yeah, getting all that pulp more in people here. Joining. Good. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. William P. Welcome, welcome. We're doing our lime squeezing inside of our ingredients of celery, kale, and cucumber. So just going to let these guys juice a little bit. And then I'm going to add the onion on top of that and the ginger. So good. That's all in there. And then let me give it a little, little pre-mix. Joshua, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Quick question on the apple cider vinegar. Is that, are you adding that just for the health benefits or is that part of like the kind of ceviche analogy in cooking the vegetables? It's a little bit of both, actually. A um, little bit of both. So it's good for, for the tummy and digestion. Uh, kind of like helps it ferment a little bit. Uh, so that's great for digestion. And then uh, also, like you're saying, that little bit of the, uh, the cooking aspect of it, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go over here. Um, yeah, for sure. So just take the ends off. And my stepfather, Bill, I always, every time I cut an onion, he, he always says, no, you know, he's trying to get as little of that skin to come off as possible. He's like, I don't want to give up that much of my onion. So every time I cut an onion now, <clears throat> when we work together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is it the onions that make you cry? <laughs> exactly. It's your sweet harmonies. Speaking of harmonies, we always play mantra music when we're cooking. Well, not we. When Joshua cooks, <laughs> he plays we positive, house, positive, happy music or yeah. sounds around us. Yes, yes, as much as possible. So the onion, uh, I like to do this really as thin as you can. So this is again where you use that technique of folding your, your finger over there so you don't cut yourself. Um, and then just really as thin as you can get them. Um, that's my preference. If you like thick, crunchy, kind of, you know, more, more oniony onions, um, then go for it, go thicker. But I kind of like a little bit more of the thin texture. So you can go thin or thick, whatever you like to do. It, hey, Chef. Yes. Uh, believe it or not, there's a taste difference between cutting the onions where you're cutting it or cutting it on a bias like most people do it when they're chopping onions. Mm -hmm. When they, I guess this being a salad, it's not going to make much difference, but they caramelize different. And that's why many times people will cut them uh, end to end instead of or not end to end, but side to side instead of end to end. Oh, interesting. I think they make a uh, more even piece to the way you're cutting them. Yeah, yeah. This is like the classic, like if you're going to, you know, serve a, a veggie burger or, you know, grilled onion. Yeah, this is like the onion ring kind of like that's the way I'm cutting them for sure. Looks like rainbows. Yeah, so it looks like the little rainbows or horseshoes. How are we looking at them? <laughs> hmm. So I just do a little like, so they're in half and then I kind of just arbitrarily kind of just chop them up a little bit and just give them a little little chop down some big some small some in between just like all of us <laughs> <laughs> and then we just crunch those all together it smells delicious in the house if you like onions that is mm. Kathy does yeah cool <laughs> all right so we've got the good stuff here, mixing, marinating, getting this going. Then I'll bring the dry ingredients and mix those all together in a bowl and then add that all together. Cool. Alrighty. So just kind of the pre-mix. Cool. Mm. My little mixing bowl. Some turmeric. So again, this is as you like to cook. Uh, we, we cook pretty liberally with all these spices, so I go pretty heavy more on the tablespoon side. So if you want to do half, you can always add, right? So start little and go big if you want some more spice. So I like to do about a good good tablespoon, maybe a little bit more for us. 
Um, this is the nutrition yeast. That's about a three quarter cup that I was recommending earlier. So I'm gonna just kind of dump that in, almost all of it, maybe maybe a third of a cup or so. And then fresh fresh cracked pepper. Just I like to go until my elbows get tired. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, it's it's again kind of depending on taste. Again, we like spicy things, so uh, you can you can use a lot of pepper if you like. Pepper's really good. Black pepper especially is good to help clean the blood, especially this day and age. We like to help clean the blood. Turmeric and black pepper together are really good for the joints and good for circulation and fighting viral conditions, which are like arthritic conditions. That's considered an arthritic or a viral condition. So eating an antiviral diet or taking antiviral supplements or using essences uh, are really good if you have arthritic conditions or things like that. Good, this is the cumin, excuse me, coriander, and about another uh, tablespoon of that for us. You can go less with that and start and add more if you like. This is the cumin, same thing, about another tablespoon. Hey Joshua, does turmeric solve anything on its own or contribute to any health, you know, when it's not, I know that there's an exponential growth when you combine things, but is turmeric good for anything? Like right. if I just want to throw it on popcorn or something. On its own, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, on its own, it's good for digestion. It's a digestion cheese stimulant, like warming, um, you know, we, we have an essence and oil that we put on the, on top of our tummy if you have like an upset tummy. Um, so yeah, of course you can use muscle them all, pain. you can always, yeah, muscle pain, um, in general, it's good for muscle pain, but yeah, you can always use everything individually, and then sometimes when you combine, they, they amplify and boost each other up a little bit, right? Lemmy is like, oh, hey, you forgot the fennel. It was hiding off, <laughs> hiding off the corner there. So yeah. let's, let's hold Everyone's off. Been yeah, that's what the main thing. <laughs> let's hold off on the fennel. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Yay. And I know. I'm just thinking, like, I know Aria can't do the pepper, or she won't do, but I still want to throw the turmeric in there because I know it's that won't be as spicy, you know? Yeah, and, and you'll, you'll be surprised, like towards the end, like if even you just put like one crack of pepper in there, because the vinegar and the salt, or excuse me, the vinegar and the lime, and then a little bit of the maple syrup really help to knock down any of that, um, that peppery taste. So the, the um, back to the fennel here real quick, the main kind of like fun part of this whole thing. Really thin, kind of like, fennel is a little bit more on the crunchier side, so um, you can go thinner, you can go thicker, we like to go about, I don't know, 16th, eighth, you know, quarter, whatever it is. Just, just cut them as you do, and you can cut them in half if they kind of stick together and pull them apart and work with them a little bit because they do kind of stick. And So mainly just working with the root here, like up until the stock, that's where a lot of the flavor is for me. Um, once you go up higher in the stock, it kind of loses the, the flavor, and you're just kind of using it for fiber. Thank you. So, um, yeah, can't believe I almost forgot the fennel. That's funny. Thank goodness for my wife. Many, many reasons. All right. So the fennel, chop, 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 chop. Fennel and, is also great for digestion. Yeah, fennel root. This is yeah. This is basically like a very healthy digestion kind of based. You know, good for the tummy. I'm gonna do one more in there because that was a little bit of a thin fennel uh, root. A little small here, so. We like our fennel. Fennel also helps women that are lactating, supports on the birth doula, so we use fennel yeah. a lot for that. Yeah. Good oh. for moon cycle harmony. I'm going to use this later, but just not in this dish. So you can always save some of your scraps. You can make stock out of it. You can compost them, whatever you're going to do. Um, so, yeah. Putting that out there. All right. Fennel. Ha <laughs> ha. That's the key. All righty. And I'll do the ginger right now too. So I take, this is about this big of a ginger, not so much. And I like to microplane it. Um, it's the best way I like, to, I like to do it, just to get the, and I like to do it with the skin on, especially if it's organic and it's really good to buy all organic food if you can, especially this day and age, you never know what's, what's happening. I know there's a lot of question on what is organic and how, what does it mean to be certified organic? From the research we've done with our food and for our essential oil company, the paperwork does matter. The people that do do it, um, that do follow through and really become certified, um, it is a... Oh my God, so cute. It is a, uh, I know, the new pup. I know. It oh. is a new, uh, a new thing to get, to get paid. Johnny, you got a puppy. Oh, and there's that. <laughs> cool. 
So just going to microclaim this down. This smells delicious as well. And also ginger, again, in that turmeric family, the Zingerbaceae, the root, root family there. Um, really good for digestion and energy, kind of a little stimulant as well for the chi, um, for, for the energy, organs. reproductive organs. So I'll good for fertility. Got that here, just kind of scrape that in. Also, ginger is one of the trinity roots, and you have onion in there. And I think the only one we're missing is garlic. Yeah, but. and you could definitely put garlic in there if you if you if you guys like garlic and you want to do that, go for it. I mean, it's it's going to cook. I would let it marinate a little bit longer for the garlic for my system. Uh, but if you can tolerate garlic, especially if you know raw, go for it. Try it out. Um, but this is this will keep it a little bit more on the sweet side. Um, if you add garlic, it's going to go a little bit of a different direction with the flavor. <laughs> okay, so spices. <laughs> Spicy spices. We'll get these guys, we'll just mix them up. I got that one wet. Do you need a mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the hemp seeds next. Put that on the very end. Put the, um, so I just kind of like to pre-mix my spices together just to get a little bit better of a blend as they mix into the dish. Take a little bit of time. Thank you everybody for being here tonight. This is our first one. And we appreciate the support. We love you all. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I know I've been looking down a lot in focus, but it's kind of a, you should get like a, a nose cam, something like that. <laughs> from the, we're not that, we're not that sophisticated yet having more than one phone or camera. And no one wants to see a nose cam. No one wants to see your nose. <laughs> well, like from this way, like if you were to see like, hey, how you doing? No. All right, so I'm not going to add, it's the voice of only mother would say that stuff. <laughs> Especially only my mother. Um, okay, now I'm just going to add this it's in. It's a family show. About, yeah, it's a family show. I'm going to about half of it to start and then blend a little bit just to get some even distribution. And then add a little bit of the hemp. Again, this is just under a half a cup of hemp. You can use less, use more. Um, if you eat hemp regularly, all foods are estrogenic, have estrogen qualities. Um, even the animals that eat, you know, plant foods, it's all. Estrogen and testosterone are always out there, so whatever you're doing, always eat in moderation and check in with your healthcare physician if you have any questions about diet and all that good stuff. All the uh, the concerns and the warnings that I need to say about listening to your diet and before you switch your diet, check with your consult or consult your physician and blah blah blah. Anyway, the blah 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 part is the most important. <laughs> Is there any protein in this? Because we know there's a big fear that if you go plant-based, you're not going to yeah. get any protein. Yeah, there's a little bit of protein, in, especially in nutritional yeast. For every two tablespoons, I believe there's about 9 or 10 grams of protein in nutritional yeast. The hemp seeds have protein. Forget that number off the top of my head. Um, the cucumbers have a little bit. Everything has a micro amount of, of proteins and sugars and carbohydrates and the good, you know, all the good things, the the the, the plant the plant foods, right? We want to we want to be able to, to digest and um, chew really good to digest them and all that kind of stuff, right? So they have they have these things. We were watching this special the other day. Plants have these little walls, cellularly speaking, that kind of like lock in their their goodness, if you will, like the stuff that we're that we we as you know consumers as 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 you know, eating people on the planet, we need to eat food. So like we, we're looking for these little nutritional pockets and each little uh, plant has these little cells in there, right? So it's, it's for their protection, for their sturdiness. It's why they can levitate, right? We always say plants are the only things that can levitate. They trees stand up, who, you know? Um, so anyway, you have, when we eat plant-based foods, you either want to like chew your food really, really, really good. Like think of a, of a cow or a giraffe or some, one of those grazing animals. They're constantly eating and you know, they, they chew their food, they go side to side, they grind, grind, grind. That's why our jaws can go side to side and up and down, right? Um, so it's, and we have a limited range of motion with our mouth as far as opening it. Um, so it's just, it's just very uh, important to chew your food really good. And if you can't, it was recommended by, I forget the doctor's name, said if you can't chew your food, then, you know, you can definitely blend and get the, get the food broken down that way to, to, to get your nutrition. Um, but as far as getting proteins and things like that, you know, you can definitely... <laughs> thrive on on plants and vegetables and get all of your your needs sometimes you have to like we supplement with a little bit of like omega um from the algae oil which is what you know up the food chain ultimately the fish ultimately are getting the algae or getting the omegas from the algae so 
as close to the source as you can get it as far as plant-wise is the best way for our, our human anatomy in, in what I've researched and what I've felt in my body uh, is the best for our health and our longevity Where and our bones. Where do you get algae oil from? Say again now? Where do you get algae oil from? Uh, from this really cool place called Sprouts Market. No, you can get it from, uh, there's a bunch of different companies out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you just have to go to your favorite Sprouts shopper market. So I'm going to add just a little bit because what? the vinegar and the lime and everything can get a little bit, um, you know, a little too much for some people. What I, about what about nuts, uh, Joshua? Like what about, as not? far as the omegas and things that you're looking for, maybe not on this wonderful creation, or maybe, but just in general, handling that protein is that something? For sure, we have. Does the benefit? Does the fat? outweigh, I mean, does the benefit outweigh kind of the calories or how does that work? Yeah, I mean, it's all, for, for me, we, we use a lot of, um, the hemp is a good one. We use a lot of walnuts because it's good for the brain, right? So it's like the, the doctrine of signature kind of an idea. So whatever you're eating is think of it how, what it looks like in your body, like what organ it looks like, and then what that organ needs to help is, is what is what's going to be in that food. That's the doctrine of signature. So the walnuts, the cashews, the, you know, some people say don't eat too much cashews. Some people say, you know, easy on this nut or that nut. But the main, the main ones that we like to go for, for protein, for, for balanced, you know, overall fats and carbohydrates and proteins and all those things, uh, the black sesame seeds are really good. That's also a kidney chi warmer. So we can soak those in, uh, you can rinse them, soak them in hot water, make you a tea. Put them on top of, you've done um, you, yeah, water. yeah, I've, I've done yeah. it on top of this before, yeah. but I'm doing the hemp seeds today. Yeah. But you can, like, you can just take black sesame seeds, again, make sure they're organic. Black sesame seeds, rinse them, let them, uh, about two tablespoons steep in a good cup of, cup of water. Drink that for, um, hot kidney, water. for in hot water. Let that steep. Strain the seeds out and then use them on a dish like this. And then um, you can drink that water. And it's actually just like a coffee as far as activating the kidneys. But it's actually a huge go-to in uh, Chinese medicine for a chi kidney warmer, like helper, healer. So... Um, you know, try it out a little bit and again, consult your physicians and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a really good alternative as far as that goes. And it's also has a lot of protein when you eat them. And it's said to also, if you have your hair is turning gray, yeah. drinking that or eating those, um, will help your hair come back to its original yeah. color. Yeah. And then, you know, the almonds are, almonds are great. I know there's a lot of like talk about almond and water usage. Wait a second. Nobody's hair is turning gray over here. Let's <laughs> stop that right now. I'm not looking at you when I say that. Just in general. I was. But like, <laughs> so that's a good point. Come on, Cass. So that's a good point. Like, I was wondering, I saw something that um, that you had communicated to me a while ago, Joshua. This is a fig, right? So is this like a liver or, I mean, if like, you turn it's it, really interesting. Turn it the other way. What does it look like? Amazing. It, I mean, a brain, actually. It looks like, looks a like it's going to my brain. The male, male anatomy and the female anatomy. So the gonads and the ovaries are what figs yeah. are good for yeah. in the future. Yeah. yeah. That's not what I was going to say. Ah! <laughs> the gonads. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, all, yeah. all the, and any, anytime you're going to work with the almonds or any yeah. you know, pumpkin seeds is a great one. The, the, the green pumpkin seeds are great for zinc and vitamin C and all these things. You want to try to sprout them, which means you want to soak your, your seeds for two to six hours depending on how much you can do it or really like like we have a vitamix so we you know if, if i don't have a chance to soak seeds i make sure that they're really well ground up within whatever i'm making so you just want to like let me as like go lower uh you just want to be able to 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 process and, and absorb so the saying we heard from the same doctors that you know the old saying is you are what you eat is actually out of date you are what you absorb is the, is more the truth so how are you chewing your food? How are you, you know, intaking your food? What are you actually absorbing in your food? And what's exiting your food without being, or with exiting your body without being absorbed? So it's like if we can slow down and look at our anatomy and, and our, our, you know, what happens when we eat this substance, goes in our body, comes out, how does that make us feel? What, is, how do, we, what do we gain from that? You know, and, and it's just an honest review of whatever you're eating in your life. Is it giving you energy? Is it giving you more or less? Is it taxing? Food is medicine versus food is pleasure. Right, yeah. There, there's a theory is food is medicine or food is pleasure. And there, there is, we believe, um, there is that place in between. And that's what the point of this whole idea of meeting together is, is that we can go in a, in a more plant-based direction and still have it be fun, still have it be creative and tasty 
and it doesn't have to be, you know, like back in the 80s, you know, it was like when, when it was, at least in my recollection, it was like, you know, the, the rice, rice cris or those rice cakes. That was like all my sister was eating was like these rice cakes. I'm like, this is the most boring oh. diet ever. It was like rice cakes and carrots and celery. It's like, oh, this is nothing. But when you, when you can get into a, you know, how do we make it better? How do we make a, you know, a delicious meal that a lot of cultures have been doing for thousands and thousands of years. Look at the Indian cultures, heavily, heavily vegetarian. Heavily, you know, long-lasting lives, longevity, flexibility, low, uh, you know, uh, uh, infirmary rates, those kinds of things. You know, so you look at the cultures that have been doing it for quite a while, and you see the benefits, and then you can apply it to your life and see if it works for your life. And if it doesn't, then find another path. You know, there's tons of different so, ways. So when you're talking about uh, chewing your food properly and getting the nutrients from your food, then you're talking about digestion. So is that where the apple cider vinegar comes in? What's helping you digest and get the most nutrients? Well, the, see, here's the thing. that Digestion starts in the mouth, and there's two processes, chemical and, and mechanical. The chemical is what happens when we use our mechanical, our mouth, our muscles, to chew up and down, chomp, chomp, chomp. That's the mechanical aspect that's helping our system, our body, recognize what it is that we're chewing because our tongue has that intelligence to know sweet, sour, sugar, all those different flavors, and it produces, our body is so smart that it produces those enzymes and, and, and such that we need in our mouth. And then as we make a soup in your mouth, they say make a soup with every bite. I'm still working on it. Believe me, you all know me. I eat very quickly and I'm trying to slow 32 down. 32 bites. 32 per... bites. They say 12 bites of food and 32 bites. 12 scoops. 12 to scoops, mouth. right? 12 scoops to mouth and 32 bites each. So when you so yes, when you take apple cider vinegar, yes, it does help digestion. It does boost the flora and the fauna. And, the, and when you take it on a more regular basis, then your stomach gets used to it, and then there's a there's a happier. Usually, with most people, there becomes a, a happy digestion, right? But it really starts when we slow down. This, he was like, "Look, pick up your food, take a bite, and put your fork down, and then chew your food." You know, like don't be in a hurry to go to the next bite, which I, so many of us in this culture, for what, for many reasons, uh, we've had to eat quickly. We've had to go, you know, eat on the run. I'm notorious. I'm notorious at standing and eating, which from restaurant days, it's like being in a hurry, going in the back and putting two bites of soup in my mouth and then coming out to the bar and, you know, waiting on people was like, that's not a good pattern to be in. So it's like, can, can we shift our patterns and, and can we see a progress in those patterns? And hopefully the answer is yes and yes. And we can get, you know, a, a better perspective of what it is to be in contact, in touch with good food that you make slowly yes in today's modern context but it's so much more worth it. there's so much more nutrition there's it's just especially when you can have conversation and you know i feel like we're all kind of hanging out in the kitchen you know we're all just kind of like talking and and it's and it's that time to to bring community together that's what cooking really is right it's kind of cooking and community are kind of synonymous to me so yeah you want to take supplements you want to you know take care of your health you want to get checked up you want to do these things um, take take all those all those things seriously, and also um, a great quote from Alan Watts the other day. Um, he's a famous philosopher. He says the angels fly because they take themselves lightly. So it's when we can take ourselves lightly enough to share and not take it personally if somebody likes us or not or does whatever or not. Right? It's it's just can, can we be in this human body and be present and be be open to trying something new and be open to a new way that than what we were raised with and. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, you can always revert back to something to that same thing or even a new opportunity, right? So I think that's that's um, a beautiful thing. So and the gift of plants yeah. is that they're always seeking the light. Yes. Whether it's the starlight, the sunlight, the moonlight, they're always outside seeking light. The animals that eat them are seeking that light within them. So yeah. it's all about being all light. About light. So, so, it's a, so that's a really interesting thought. So what you're saying, which makes sense simply, like uh, at the simplest level, is that like our body knows that it takes 32 chews to, to, to chew kale and, you know, 30 chews to chew an apple or whatever it is. So it's sort of just paying attention, being in, like aware of that natural kind of response to what we're eating yeah. really like kind of magnifies the health benefits that we get from those foods as they're designed to be. And so I guess like Doritos, like our body doesn't know how to handle those, right? Yeah, like, 
how many cues do you get or not get, you know, to do that situation. John, you throw the back of we, I mean, we were all, you know, we were all raised in a, in a very, um, you know, processed food way. And, and, it, and, it, and it stemmed from the Great Depression. Still are, though. You know, so like there, there's been a, there's always been a concern with food and, and trying to survive. So as we've gained in technology, we've we've been able to save more food and process more food to last, quote unquote, longer. But what happens on an Ayurvedic level of thinking the Indian culture, again, um, in many levels of thinking as far as, you know, indigenous cultures is, it, whatever you eat, you want to you wanna like harvest it and eat it as soon as possible. Because the further away that it is from that source, it's, it's dying, right? Once you cut something from its life source, it's technically dying, right? So even though we, have, we went down to the market and I bought fresh this four days ago, it's been sitting in my fridge. And now this, you know, now it has a little bit older energy. So you, that's why when you cook with food, you want to like send love to your food as well. Um, so I got off on a tangent. What was I going to say there? Um, Anyway, that makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, yeah. And so, so, so what's our solution, right? So with what we're making tonight, which is beautiful, like all of our lives sort of revolve and exist. Like you just said, grabbing a couple of bites of soup, like how do we maintain as much like purity? I mean, it's not even purity. It's like simplicity, right? It's, it's just right. maintaining things the way they were designed to maintain. How do we do that? Like, what do we eat? Like, what's a good snack to do that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for, for us, we, we do kind of like the bigger preps and we have like a three or four day like thing where this this amount, this is a pretty, I forget the size amount, this is like an eight, eight cup or whatever thing. So this will last a few days here. And then, that, you know, we have the rice. So it's really kind of like meal planning. And, you know, if you're going to eat beans, soak your beans the night before. And if you're going to have rice, soak it. Like all these things like, all these indigenous cultures and you know these native cultures that where this where these foods come from look at how they're cooking it and they soak their rice they soak their beans and you know it's for, it's for a reason to leach different like arsenics and things out and to you know, expand the liveliness and, and the bioavailability of the food and all these things that like we kind of get get lost on and to, to the, the question earlier with the food they say you know it, your eyes can see such a spectrum of the of the colors because that's what you can what you know is good for you. Like when we see certain certain foods, like a cantaloupe or a watermelon, like our eyes see it, and then kind of like doctrine of signature, our eyes can recognize that color and knows that that color is going to be good for this. It's going to have beta carotene. It's going to have whatever in it. So the, the color and our eyes and looking at what we're eating. So yes, Doritos are orange, but it's not an orange, right? So the processed food is like it's it's again it's, it's dead food really. And it gets you by, it fills your tummy up, it might have some caloric intake in there. Does it have a lot of nutrient value? Probably not. The, the value on that chart is what those ingredients were when they were first tested, whenever they were along that life cycle after being harvested, I don't know. So I always question, as much as I look at the labels, I always question how much of it is applied to the food that's in this package. Like, is that when they were first harvested? That's the that's the protein and carbohydrate and all those values, or is it like somewhere down the line mixed and lost? You know, so um, as fresh as you can grow. I know you guys grow your own food. You have a great space to do that. So you know, look at the seasonal gardening, especially here in Southern California. We can get away with with so much food all year round, especially if you have space. So a little greenhouse for that those cold winter times. Um, but really, it's it's taking it into our own hands and working with your community. It's kind of an ironic thing right now in this day and age, but it's getting to know your neighbors and seeing who has what fruit trees and how you can all share and help. And, you know, we're kind of in this place of like, no, stay away from people for whatever reason. But we, it's kind of like, we have to think, why, why are we staying away from each other right now? This is like when we need each other the most, right? So um, anyway, I digress a little bit. Um, so I just wanted to come back to this real quick. Um, I love talking to everybody and I'm going to look, it smells like I need to add a little bit more nutritional yeast because I know what it smells like. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. And again, this has a lot of protein. This is just a natural airborne uh, situation. You can look up nutritional yeast. We use it and it's kind of a cheesy flavor too, right? It has a great little cheesy flavor. So that's why I was, I was smelling this and like, you know, it doesn't smell like it did the other day. Um, so it just, it gives a little bit of that cheesiness in there. And as you all know, uh, I was a cheese freak uh, when I was a kid and still love cheese, but now uh, just kind of go a little, little different direction here. 
getting my cheese fix. But, vegetable um, cheese. Vegetable cheese. Well, it's kind of like a, you know, it's a thing. We love to refer to it as plant-based. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so this is kind of what the, uh, the, the rough ingredients look like before mm. it's been soaked. So head right there. Um, so you can it's see there's so a little good, bit of apple guys. cider vinegar in the bottom. And then so what I like to do is I'll, um, of course, you can have a couple bites now and snack on it if, if you're hungry. Um, but I like to put it in the fridge and let it soak for at least a couple of hours. And then um, definitely tomorrow it's going to be really, really good. And the day after that it gets even a little bit better. And then after that, we're usually finished with it. And after about three days, you want to be, be finished with food that, that you've prepared in this manner. Um, just again for the energy of it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you have juice left over, let's say you're not scooping all the juice out of your thing, it makes a nice topper like on top of rice or any kind of dish like that. You can use that juice um, on the side for some other marinade or some other topping. So yeah, I think, I think I got all my stuff in. It's ready to go. We're going to let this sit for a little bit. And it was so wonderful to see everybody and just appreciate all your support and your love and your questions and conversation. And if there's any other questions, you can we can chat about I it. I want to know how Sean's daughters got so old when you're all so young. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop the recording and then yes. we'll ask those yeah, questions. Yeah, we'll stop the recording. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, and oh, you want to do the, the thing, the Rama Holistic? No. You can go to Rama Holistic Care and check us out. Yeah, RamaHolisticCare.com. We're on Instagram and Facebook. If you heard any of the music in the background, we also have a band called The Conscious Groove. You can find us at TheConsciousGroove.com, also on Facebook and Instagram. And Joshua is going to be sharing a recipe once a month. Yes. Please. By the grace of goodness, it'll be the last Thursday of every month, unless something comes up that we can't do that, and we'll let you know either way. Um, you can always find the Zoom links on our website. I'll have it up for next month on the homepage um, as soon as it turns into October. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful night. Take care. Love you. Love you.